Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, he lives out on the west coast of the United States, in San Francisco, where there's a bum sleeping in every doorway and a tent on every street. <laughs> oh boy. And the uh, sales force building is virtually empty. The, the sales force building? Is that it's a, a huge sky, ugly sky. And there's nobody built. in it. I just read the other day. They said it's virtually empty. I bet you could get an office there for next to nothing, then, huh? Yeah, the uh, commercial real estate in San Francisco has collapsed. Um, they say a lot of banks are going to be stuck with the commercial properties now. So. Wow, wow. Well, you know, if you need an office, I bet you can get one for next to nothing in those buildings. You could, yeah, they're actually talking about converting them to a par- apartment. Really? Oh, boy. Here in New York, a lot of the office buildings are, are empty. And they're empty basically because what happened is during COVID, a lot of these companies switched to everybody working from home. And um, as a result, uh, the office space became a thing of the past. Yeah, so... Yeah, so the, uh, I know the uh, Apple has got that enormous building in Cupertino. They're, I think they're kind of pissed because they want their employees to come back, but most of them don't want to come back. Well, once you get used to working from home, and I, I, you know, nothing. there's nothing to say you can't be just as productive from home as being in an office, you know? And um, I think that that... that you know they should think about that that the productivity of those people actually goes probably goes up a little bit only because they're not waste because how much time do you waste in an office you know they yeah. had they had a thing on uh, CBS Sunday morning this week about companies that the worst thing they're doing is holding meetings there's like a meeting every day and the meetings go on for a couple hours and nothing gets accomplished in those meetings. <laughs> and if Didn't any, we do that in radio all the time. We had meetings. <laughs> we had meetings, and the thing is, you have meetings, and they said that if it's especially a bad meeting, it has a deleterious effect on your company, because what you're essentially saying is, uh, everybody goes out of the meeting goes, wasn't that the worst meeting ever? You know. <laughs> and uh, they said that's not good for a company. It's better that you hold. Yeah. Just the, and then they showed how much it costs to hold a meeting in in actual physical time of the people there and how much they're getting paid, and it's enormous. And the meetings don't amount to anything. What they are is, I think, probably a power display by your bosses. So, yeah, yeah it's mostly just that somebody wanted to yak on, I don't know, yeah, it was a waste of time. An absolute waste of time. And they made a big, you know, they uh, uh, they said that they should stop doing these things. They should stop doing these meetings. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we have a friend, for instance, who works at a company, and she's, they want her to come in twice a week. Now, why the coming in twice a week does anything for her productivity, I have no idea. But as you say, some companies like Apple are saying, we want our people in here, or we want them in here two days a week or three days a week. Well, how does that an advantage over the person sitting at home doing the work the other three days of the week? You know, it, it just it doesn't make any sense. It all has to do with power. We have an office, and we want to see our employees. Yeah, they probably think if you're at home, you're screwing off, so. Thank God we never had to work for the for for a company like that, you know. Uh, I mean, even when I worked at Sirius, I don't think we ever had any meetings. 
that I that I can remember. I think a couple of times we had company meetings where they would have an auditorium they would rent out and we would all go to the auditorium and the boss would give us a report on how the company was doing and so on and so forth. But it was nothing where you were discussing how you were going to do business, you know. So, um, that, that's that. But anyway, uh, you know, we haven't talked about death today. No. <laughs> well, we did it last time, so you don't want to overdo the death thing. Uh, we can't, well, you and I cannot get enough about the death thing, you know. I mean, do you wake up every morning like I do saying, is this the day I'm going to die? I think uh, more and more about, like, man, is this going to be my last year? Yeah, well, you used to have a saying about death and about knowing when you were going to die. Do you remember that yeah. one? You remember uh, that? Go ahead, tell them. It would be great if you knew what day you were going to die, but not the year. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Great idea. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I would. I want to know when I was going to die. Nah, nah. You know, I mean, but then again, you keep wondering. At my age, you especially wonder. But then, you know, we were talking about all these people that had died at yet, like young, young years, like Peter Laurie. You said died at thirty, uh, at, at sixty. Uh, and you, you think about that, and you go, well, you know, I could have died all these years, and I didn't. You know, so I wound up to this age, and of course I'm getting to where, you know, it's getting into that tunnel, right, uh, that you're walking down. But still, I could have died at 40, you know, and then never become the legend I have. <laughs> uh, so, you know. But but well, uh, most yeah, but most people. I think we're most people. They I think they like it, but they they don't want to talk about death at all. But Marjorie, my wife, says she she'll be happy when she dies. You know, I said, why? You know, she she has no fear of death. I have a great fear of death. Always had a great morbid fear fear of death. Me too. Yeah. And as I've told you before, I asked my father once, uh, you know, he said, I'm afraid of dying. And he said, well, you shouldn't be. be. You've been there before. And I said, what do you mean? He said, before you were born, you didn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's going to be just like before you were born. So then I went to bed every night having nightmares about what it was like before I was born. (laughs) (laughs) That didn't help much, you know. But he was right. You know, we've been there before. In that area of non-existing, I think is what we're talking about here. Yeah. And, and it was, it was uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, uh, we, we, we were in that la-la land where we didn't exist. I, I just, can you get with that concept of not existing? I mean, yeah, it's kind of uh, like you said. It's just uh, the time before you were born. I mean, yeah, but you, you, uh, you, it's hard to conceive of not existing, mainly because the only thing you know is existing. Your existence, yes, and then suddenly you're turned off like a light switch, and that's it. That yeah, doesn't seem right, but. Yeah. Now I'm jealous of all these, uh, you know, Catholics and. Baptists and so on, who believe that after they die they're going to a better place because that all religion ever tried to do was to soothe people's notions of dying, you know. Soothe and and also keep them in line. So if you're a good person, you're not going to burn in hell. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. But I mean, I'm, 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 uh, uh, so I, I, you know, I uh, have always been jealous of those people. Because they really think that when they die, they're going to go see Uncle Harry and Aunt Mary and their mother and their father and so on. Like right. Yeah, now. and I guess you got to hand it to them. I mean, if you actually believe that, you're probably happier than we are. I mean, I, I wish, I hope that's true. I hope that is true. Yeah. Okay, I hope that all these years I've been putting down people for believing in something which, quite frankly, uh, I can't start believing in. All right? 
uh, and um, uh, that I hope it's true because then maybe I will meet, you know, and it would be hilarious. And Uncle oh, look, Harry. there's Monty Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, meet my Uncle Harry. Wait a minute, I never had an Uncle Harry. Well, you do now. Yeah, uh, but you know, but you know, I mean, it'd be nice if I could think that hey, I'll die and and finally I'll be with Shecky. You know. Yeah. Uh, that would be nice. Be nice if I could spend the well, maybe not that nice if I could spend the rest of my eternity with Shecky. That might be hell, actually, if I think about what, it. Uh, and I love the guy. Uh, great uh, things I miss is that I never got to meet Shecky. You never did meet Shecky, did you? No, and he just sounded like such an interesting guy, and all the stuff that he had. And- yeah, no, he was he was he was definitely an interesting guy. It was you know what bothered me about his death most of all it was all the information he had in his brain about movies and about television shows and so on. And the, the life spent watching these movies and uh, and uh, you know putting them in a, in, a, in an archive and so on. And that all of a sudden you die, and it, it's like turning on, as you say, a light switch, turning off a light switch. Mm-hmm. And one day I see him lying in the hospital bed, and the next day he's dead, and all that information, poof, gone. Yeah. And you go, why did you spend your whole life accumulating that information? And I do the same thing. I mean, I, I accumulate a lot of trivial information. I love trivial information. And I have a lot of it in my brain. And once I go, poof, it's gone. Gone. You know, that's it. But, you know, it's... it's uh, it, uh, I, I, I just... So the futility of that bothered me, you know. That I had nobody to call anymore when I saw a movie and wanted to know who was this guy in this movie. Tell me about him, you know. And he always had the information. I could. He was he was like Alexa. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, actually, he didn't. There, uh, past past say nineteen sixty. I don't think he really cared about movies that much. You know, he Where really cared old about stuff? old okay. the old stuff. Yeah. You know. And I and I'm the same way. I mean, I I have always been interested in what happened before I was born. And I think that was, I think my father instilled that in me because he would talk about certain actors or actresses that existed before I was born and tell me all about them. And so I, I, I got liking that information. I mean, the fact that today uh, the woman uh, in movies that I would most want to have sex with is Clara Bow. Clara Bow. You know, and and, every, up at 25. <laughs> and everybody would go, who's Clara Bow? And I could sit here and tell them, and they wouldn't understand the enormity of her popularity when she was alive, you know, when she was in the movies. And she was a worldwide, the biggest star worldwide. No question about it. Wow. For about, I, I don't know how many years. I'd have to ask Shecky. Shecky? How many years was Clara? Oh, no. um, uh, the fact was that Clara Bow was finished at twenty-five, and she was adorable. Have you have you seen pictures of her? I have seen pictures of her. Very am I, cute. Am I right? Just adorable, and she had a personality to go with it, and she was a wonderful person. See, her problem was. See, folks, I'm talking about a movie star. You, most of you never heard of it, and most of you don't care about But it, it, she was a wonderful, wonderful star in that she never forgot her, her past, where she grew up. She grew up poverty-stricken Brooklyn, right, with a thick Brooklyn accent. And in Hollywood, they hated her because she, they all wanted to forget where they came from. And she didn't. She admitted to it. She, the, and there's this wonderful story about how this kid in Long Beach, out in California, wrote her a letter, and she read all her letters, all her fan letters. Uh, and he said, every week I go down to the pier and I sell newspapers. And it would help me, 
my family needs this money that I make from selling these newspapers, and you would be a great help to me if you could come down and help me yeah. sell them. She got in her, she had a driver, drive her down to Long Beach, found this kid, and then stood behind the uh, behind his counter or whatever, selling newspapers with him all day. I mean, this was one of those kind of people who was just genuine. That's a good heart. In a business that was full of phonies, you know, yeah. and people who wanted to forget their past. And she would go back to Brooklyn and so on. But there were rumors about her that she was promiscuous, that she had sex with every member of the University of California basketball, baseball, uh, football team, okay? No, she had a party where she invited them all over because she loved the team. But no, she didn't have sex with them. But that was the rumor that ran around, you know. So she she really was hounded out of the business. Not and then sound sound came, and she hated sound. But she her voice recorded very well and very likable. And there was no reason why her career couldn't have continued, but she just couldn't take it anymore. Really? And she, and she, wow. she retired with her husband to Arizona where he ran for I think Congress and uh, so she wound up in politics but she didn't want to do that either it's a very interesting life it's a very interesting story about a very interesting person but See, you know I, I'm the same I like but most people I know young, especially younger people they have no interest in anything that happened before they were born okay well the other actress I'll bring up to you then is Marion Davies you know who Marion Davies was. Uh, she was hooked up with uh, Hearst, right? Right. But that's the most you know about her, right? That's all I know. Have you ever seen her movies? No. She was a great silent star. She was hilarious. She was wonderful. There's a picture called Show People. That's a silent film that is available and everybody should watch. It's just a great comedy. And she was amazing. And her whole career was eclipsed by the fact that she was... William Randolph Hearst Paramour. And people think, well, okay, she was just a, she looked upon him as a sugar daddy. When William Randolph Hearst, at the time of the uh, Depression, at the time of the Wall Street crash, literally was left with no money, she went and sold not only her property, she owned Columbus Circle here in New York. Her pro wow. her pro she not only sold her property, but all her jewelry that he had given her over the years, and then went to him with a check for one million dollars and saved the Hearst Empire. Jesus. So this is no no, you know, uh, hoochie mama. This is no no. <laughs> this isn't this isn't someone who was working overtime. <laughs> Uh, That's a woman I didn't that I didn't think existed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus, a, after Hearst died, um, she went in. She she went her separate ways because the family wouldn't even any, let anybody know that this was his girlfriend. In fact, she when he was dying, she was so in bad, such bad shape. They gave her some drugs to put her to sleep. And she slept through the night. When she woke up, every trace of William Randolph Hearst in the house was gone. And, you know, and this was her house, by the way. So this, this is how the family treated her. Wow. Uh, but it, it, she went into building hospitals, and she did that. She had the Marion Davies Center in L.A., uh, all kinds of things. And somebody once said about Marion Davies, that Marion Davies made up for the rest of Hollywood. <laughs> That's an awfully nice Great line, yeah. comment to say about somebody. Why isn't there a movie about her? I think there has been, you know, there have been, I think, movies about Hearst and, and Davies. But um, there's a very good one called The Cat's Meow that was done by Peter Bogdanovich. And it's about... A situation in which they Hearst had a boat and they went out on it for the weekend with Charlie Chaplin and uh, William Ince, I think, was the uh, director. And uh, they went out, and Hearst was very jealous of Marion. Uh, he knew he was older. He knew that he, you know, perhaps 
couldn't live up to her expectations of a lover uh, and she felt he was having she was having an affair with Charlie Chaplin which I think she was okay because Charlie Chaplin would have sex with anything that had a pulse you know. that's what I always heard right <laughs> M, M, M was underage but anyway uh, one night uh, William they say that uh, William Ince was sitting on the boat and he was talking I think to Marion Davies and he thought it was Chaplin so he took out a gun and shot him and the guy died and as soon as they got back to back to shore they cremated the body so there couldn't be an autopsy and it's rumored that that uh, Hearst had actually killed. Uh, I think I think it was William Ince. I may be I wrong. I think I've heard. Yeah, so he literally got away with murder. Y- yeah, and the movie The Cat's Meow is about that. It starts out by saying some things are legend and some things are stronger than legend. Uh, and and it's a really very interesting movie about that whole weekend and how it went down and the fact that Luella Parsons was on the boat and she covered for William Randolph and therefore wound up having a job for the rest of her life with the Hearst Corporation. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a very interesting movie. and i got to see that. That whole relationship that she had with William Randolph Hearst was not as most people think it was. You know, they were mm-hmm. together for 35 years. You know, this wasn't some temporary thing. And she thought the world of him. She referred to him as Pops, you know. And um, she was she was very much in love with him, but of course, you know he was an older man. He couldn't live up to some of her sexual expectations, and so she she had a few little dalliances on the side, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. But another great story from from yeah. silent films. Uh, people, people, the people will never remember. You know. I mean, we talk about Mary Pickford. Mary Pickford, biggest star, female star in the world at one point. You know, uh, married to Douglas Fairbanks, one of the biggest stars in the world at that time. Uh, they had a, a house down in Hollywood called Pickfair. You know, probably the first time they'd ever done that, you know, putting those two names together, you mm-hmm. know, because today we call people couples, you know. Brangelina, you know, things like that. Well, but, nobody today will achieve the, the fame that those people had. It was worldwide. Uh, yes, uh, no question about it, you know. I mean, we, we think of people today as stars, and they don't even begin to come up to the level of a person like a Clara Bow. There's no female star alive today. It has the popularity that Clara Bow, Bow enjoyed worldwide. So you know, I, I know I know you people find that impossible to believe, but that's true. And uh, you know, so it's great, uh, great, great stories to be had back then. Yes, folks, I'm old, but I don't I don't even remember these people. I wasn't alive when they were stars. Okay, that's how far back this goes. These yeah. are these are people who had careers a hundred years ago, All right. and, they're, and they're more interesting than anyone today. Well, Clara Bow, I think I don't know the time frame, but I think she's twenties. Okay, the, her big period was the nineteen twenties. So if that's so, we're in the nineteen, we're in the twenty twenties right now. Hundred years ago. Hundred years ago, Jesus. You know, and we should remember. We should remember these people. We should go back and watch those silent films because if you think you love movies and all you know is, you know, a movie that was made 10 years ago, if you don't watch silent films, you haven't, you, you've deprived yourself of some great movies. I love movies. silent movies. Yeah. Just make sure they have a good music track with them that goes yeah. along with it and, they're, and they're, they're restored to a condition that isn't terrible and, and watch them. They're great. They're terrific. I, you know, I, I love silent films. But, you know, this, again, this is my mania of loving stuff before I was born. All right? And uh, 
Anyway, so everything else going good. Oh, hey, yeah. what happened with your uh, your your eyes? Oh, that's uh, well, that's uh, been uh, scheduled uh, oh. August two a uh, couple weeks from now. Oh, okay. I thought it already happened. But no. Have you got a guide dog uh, lined up? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have cataract surgery. No big deal. Well, yeah, which I'll probably let's see if I can. Uh, cancel this for the eighth time so. no don't cancel it do it do it it's simple it's really amazingly simple it sounds disgusting but it's amazingly simple yeah anyway i'll talk to you later larry yeah, yeah you can uh, hand my blind and my guide dog yeah yeah uh, and uh seeing eye something for larry bubbles brown thanks larry bye thanks alex Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes. Larry, good old Larry Brown. We'll come on again next week. We, we love Larry. I, I love Larry. Anyway. Hey, I just got off a phone with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Amazon. Guess what? You know the delivery I was supposed to get yesterday? And they said it was not going to be rescheduled for today. Well, I got a note from the people who were supposed to deliver it saying we, we couldn't deliver it. That's getting a little frustrating, you know. I wait around here all day for a package. Because if you're not here, sometimes they don't deliver it. And you wait all day, and it doesn't get delivered, and that's very frustrating. So you wait uh, around the next day because they say they're going to re-deliver it, and they don't. Okay? So I, I call them. Um, I call up uh, Amazon, and I'm telling you, it is just, you know, Amazon used to be so good. They used to be so delightful to do business with, and they're not delightful to do business with anymore. They just aren't. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I'm really, kind of, it kind of saddens me because, you know, I, I always felt that of all the companies that they had out there that were suddenly going to pot and they weren't doing their job and it wasn't working, uh, that, that you at least had Amazon. They were still living up to a certain standard. Well, I don't know. I guess Jeff Bezos just doesn't care anymore, and it's just terrible. I mean, I play, I recorded the 11 minutes. I put it up, by the way, on uh, YouTube. If you go over to YouTube, not the live page but the recordings of that we have it's right there I just put it up uh, and you can just hear my frustration I didn't think it was necessarily worth playing here but you might like it you might find it fun you might want to comment on it you know so I just I'm I happy to happy that uh, those people are, uh, are 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 screwed up too because now the whole world is screwed up I don't know Anyway, let's uh, let's bring on some people here um, for what is a another frustrating exercise in internet radio, and uh, their uh, lady or broadcasting, shall we say? This isn't radio. Uh, I used to work in radio. I know what radio is, and this isn't radio. Uh, and there's uh, there's oh, we lost Jeff. Oh well. Hello, Josh. Hello. How are you? What's happening? Not a lot right now. Yeah? Sitting around, waiting for the shows. Well, here it is. Here it is. For better or for worse. That's right. You know, um, yeah, it's uh, probably for worse. You know, so it's not been a good week for me. So, I, yeah. It's like the whole world is attacking me. Yeah. You know. You feel like Trump, mm -hmm. the victim. Mm -hmm. Everyone's out to get you. You didn't even do anything wrong. It's just not right. Only in my case, I'm right. <laughs> you know, I mean, what did I do that was wrong? Nothing. Uh, yeah, I know. You didn't steal any elections or commit any felonies or anything. So it's not right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I finally decided I've, I've come up with an I came up with a new theory because I had two things now that are happening vis-a-vis -vis the apartment, both of which neither of which would get us kicked out of here, but they take 
tons of lawyer money to solve, okay? <laughs> and um, one of those things that was uh, very, um, um, that was really bothering me was this thing yesterday with somebody saying that I own $4,200 and suing me for it because uh, <laughs> Uh, it was it was the guy we owed seventy five thousand dollars to, mm -hmm. and he was the guy we rented from. Whoops! Right. Excuse me, folks. Oh, God, go back. Uh, and uh, and and so when we paid him off the seventy five hundred, he kind of kept fudging about paying off the uh, returning to us the security deposit, right? So we <laughs> simply took the security deposit off the top. And gave him the rest, seventy-eight thousand five eight is seventy thousand eight hundred dollars, right. which seems to make a lot of sense. You know, I could say to him, "Hey, send us a security deposit," but he wasn't going to do that. You know, uh, right. so uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm in the right here because I mean, what what am I? What is the judge going to say? Well, listen, you uh, send him. Uh, his uh, forty-two hundred dollar deposit back, and then you send him forty-two hundred dollars. Yeah, right. And it, then it, you know that doesn't make much sense, right? Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't need your deposit anymore, right? Because you're you're severing the rental. Well, no, he doesn't need my deposit, and he, on top of it, that's money he has. Right. Yeah. So he's sure. not out any money. He has the whole seventy-five thousand from us. Yeah, it's sure. money out of our pocket into him. You know. But I finally decided that, and the the, uh, the landlord who, you know, is playing footsies with the renewal because he wants to renew at a higher rate, like eighteen hundred dollars more mm. than the renewal. Can they do that? No, the they, no, they, they, no, they can't do that. But here's what happens: they do it, right? right. And then, in order yeah. for you to get them to not do it, you got to hire your lawyer to go out and chew out their ass. Well, yeah. after I'm after it's all through, I've spent about you know five thousand dollars, right? Um, and that's what they're counting on. They're counting right. on the fact that you know I just oh to hell with it, you know. But I told Marjorie today. I said, I tell you, I'm through. I said, if anybody's going to talk to the lawyers, you can talk to them. I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Just let me know when we either have to move out. Or when we have to pay forty two hundred dollars to that asshole, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm not going to pay. It. Even if a judge told me to pay the forty two hundred, I wouldn't because that then means the money I paid him was like uh, forty nine thousand uh, seventy nine thousand eight hundred dollars. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, come yeah, on. you might have to have the guy whacked or something. You know, maybe. Well, and, and, yeah, yeah, I don't do that. I leave that up. And to send your. I mean, wonder if you could get like a. You could say you're running for like the homeowners association president and get you like a super PAC to support you and pay your fees. Exactly. Exactly. And lawyers and things, and you're just you know yeah. you're just trying to fix things. You could make Phil Meyer live next door to him. Something like <laughs> that. Yeah. But uh, no, I wouldn't wish these people on Phil Meyer. Oh really? Wow. <laughs> you know. Um, no, it's, it's terrible. It's it's just terrible. And what's disappointing really is Amazon because I, I, I think you'll all agree there was a point at which Amazon was a pretty decent company to do business with. And now it's just horrendous. Just horrendous. One of the things they said to me on this, you, you could hear it if you want to, you know, listen to the, the, uh, t the video of it, which is, again, on YouTube. Uh, they... Uh, said to me, well, here's what we'll do. We'll, um, uh, we'll return the money to you right now. And then when you get it, uh, just uh, send it back to us. <laughs> and I went, I'm not a shipping service here. Yeah, that you is know? a hassle. Huh? That's a hassle. It, well, you know what they used to do in the old days? They used to say, hey, it's too much trouble. Just keep what If it comes, keep it. Right? Yeah. We'll send you a new one right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, so I, 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 I it just, but everything's so frustrating now. Maybe it's just, is it me? No, it's yeah. why I don't do anything because I can't stand to do anything because I mean, I, you know, 
Is it, you know, I, well, if I don't have to go to work, I stay here and I do my research and I work on my uh, projects that I've told you about, you know, and the book thing and all that. And I just work on that all day and that's it. Because yeah. every time you go anywhere, it's a huge pain in the butt. Well, I'm getting a whole huge, <laughs> I'm getting a whole huge amount of money, and but I'm not getting it for a little bit yet. It takes a while. Okay. But it's, if I had it right now, I would just say to my lawyer, I don't care what it costs. Do something to take these people out. You know? Just go out. Just waste their time. Okay? Make them spend lots of money. <laughs> Let Tony move in next to him. Yeah. <laughs> what? Where did that come from? <laughs> Easy. Make him funny. Yeah. But anyway, so well, this is all, are, hmm? you know, I mean, at least you don't have three or four criminal trials coming up. You got to go through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Well, yeah. I feel somewhat fortunate in that respect. Yes, uh, definitely. Just got, the, just got the one thing to deal with, so you know you have got time to do other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, you know, it just, you know, you got to, you don't have to keep all your lawyers straight for your mm -hmm. different. You know, places well, by, and all that kind of stuff. By the way, I don't know how many of you out there listening to me or how many here. And there are not many of you here. Um, have ever called Amazon customer support. And I don't know how many of you have been put on hold. <laughs> but let me just say that this is a multi-billion dollar company. This is a company that is worth just an just an inordinate ungodly amount of money okay yeah. Yeah. and in all the years i've been doing business with them they won't change the hold music <laughs> it is the same piece of music over and over and you know and i gotta tell you amazon sells music they could buy some of it okay and play oh. it to why we're waiting so I don't have to hear the same song over and over and over. I've been hearing it for the last 15 years. Well, the profits are in the margins, you know. I mean, they're just doing what they can for your, you know, Well, stock. they probably figure <clears throat> if you if they play this music long enough while you're on hold, it will drive you nuts. <laughs> okay? And by the time they get to you, you're weakened. You know, well, you're completely yeah, I mean, beaten down. You know, almost all these companies that you talk about now have basically just adopted, you know, like an insurance company's playbook and just, you know, deny, 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 and then hope that you just say, uh, no, I'll pay to fix my own car, you know? <laughs> I mean, Marjorie went through this with, uh, <laughs> with a, a delivery that was supposed to come, not from uh, Amazon, but from a company that was sending her a replacement iPhone for one that broke, okay? She was here for about five days before she finally got it, you know, because they were supposed to deliver it and then they didn't deliver it and they didn't know where it was. And oh, we're sorry. And you know what they always do? This is, they always say this, and I get sick of this. Oh, well, we're sorry. No, you're not. And no, you're not. If you were sorry, I, I, get tired I, wouldn't, of it too. I, I wouldn't be calling you right now. Oh, if I'm on a recorded line, I say, no, you're not. You, uh, you don't say that. You're just an employee. You, uh, what are you sorry about? You know, about? And, I, I, and I, I yell at the person, but then I say to myself, uh, I apologize I apologize to them because I go, you know, I just know you're another person who works there and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. That's you right. Know? But yeah. I'm yelling at you. Please know that I'm yelling at the company, <laughs> not you. Yeah. You know? Because I feel about it, they, they, you know, it's some poor schlub who got a job that pays fifteen bucks an hour. If that, it's Amazon. It's probably like ten. When Amazon yeah. first started, you had English speaking, uh, you know, Americans or whatever, on customer service. But it got so big and grew so now. Now it's in the Philippines. Well, and, uh, that, I think and some that, of these people yeah. are have great English, and some of them don't. Well, all I know is that I got a woman, and I, it sounded like she was Asian of some sort. It may have been Filipino, uh, and uh, I uh, she called. I talked to her, 
Uh, and she says, I'm going to have to turn you over to my supervisor. So I hold Stay On Line with that miserable music playing. Yep. And then her supervisor comes on. I thought I was talking to the same woman. It was the same accent. You, you know, Apple, uh, speaking of that music thing, Apple has got a neat thing that they do. If you call Apple, they'll say, while you're on hold, you can listen to yeah, right. contemporary music, press one, jazz, press two, th that type of thing. That That's a smart move. Because they pay for the rights. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when you're as big as Apple. But no, I don't know any other company that does that, that allows you to listen to music that you might like to listen to. Yeah, well, I mean, it... it, it, it... <clears throat> The time on hold is not as long as it used to be. No. It used to be hellish. You know, I remember waiting on line on hold to get a talk to somebody for 45 minutes uh, with some companies. But, you know, I mean, the fact that they... I wonder if, if you live in the Philippines, if you call Apple support, if you get an American. <laughs> possible. Yeah, it is possible. You know, so I'm just frustrated by everything. I'm just, you know, we don't have too much Amazon trouble here, so maybe it's just because it's so busy there in in the New York. But um, things don't always get here, you know, as fast as they used to. Obviously, but it's it's not. Well, not I don't care about speed. I care about when they say Monday it is going to be there that it gets delivered. That's what right. I care because mm -hmm. I. I usually stay around because I know that there are certain problems, maybe getting into the building or they have to ring up and I have to ring them in. And if I'm not here to ring them in, uh, they might not, they might give up and just go away. So I have to stay here. And so if I'm going to stay here, I want you to deliver it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, just deliver it when you say you're going to deliver it five days from now. Oh, by the way, by the way, we, last night we were talking about HP. And what a con that is. In fact, I'm getting a new printer tomorrow because I just don't want to even have to buy any HP products, okay? Yep. And, and um, but I want, at one point in the process, I was thinking, about, ah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll order the ink from HP, okay? I'll order on Amazon, I'll order a black cartridge and then a tricolor box. <laughs> And uh, that'll that'll be it. I'll, I'll just get. I give in. Okay. So I go yeah. and I do that. And then what does it say? Delivery in a week. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, why delivery in a week? This, is, a, this is HP products. They constantly can. Can they constantly supply? No. You know what they're doing? They want to sell you that subscription thing for the ink. Yeah. And so the, if you want to buy the regular ink, it takes longer because they just don't keep it in stock. And you know, I've actually never bought ink from Amazon because, I don't know, every ink cartridge I've ever looked at, when I went down and read the reviews, every single one of them across several different brands were chocked full of reviews that said it was not a genuine HP or whoever's cartridge or it was a, a used one or something like like a ton of scams were on there and i've just always worried you know and i've just always been like hey, i'll just stop at a store or something you know and get in but they even said like it even came in a package or thing and when you opened it up it was obviously used like someone's running scams on ink or well i mean all inks are scams I, I have, anyway so yeah i have and i showed it last night i, I have know. backup inkjet cartridges I've read sure. that a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I have two, yeah. Josh. Just well, here, here's what I'm doing tomorrow. Look. Tomorrow I'm going over to Costco. Mm. Yeah. I'm paying $400, and I'm going to get an Epson with yeah. the ink that you pour into it. Yeah, you're so yeah. And believe it or not, even a bunch of those, and you can get, you know, second-hand, you know, second-party uh, mm. ink as well. But Yeah. But that ink... Is so much cheaper yep. and lasts right. longer. And then than that's the other thing about ink on Amazon is when they do sell like the the off brand, mm. and you read those reviews, like 
I mean, it's chock full. I mean, it's like 70, 80 percent. People said that didn't work. I put it in, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. <laughs> I was like, fuck this, you know. I mean, it, it's just like you said. Yeah, my my HP printed things. <clears throat> it should be the most simplest thing, you know. You buy a thing, uh, ink cartridge, and you take it out, and you put the new mm. one in. It should take five seconds, and they all are such a pain in the butt. My my old HP printer. Sorry, I cut you off a minute ago, Josh. My old HP printer didn't have this stuff, and I, I could buy generic ink from Amazon, and it would come, and it would work all the time. I figured I could do the same thing with my new one with the HP Plus, and you're right. I ordered them from Amazon. They guaranteed they'd work, and they don't work. I, I so got, I sent them I, back well, and got my money back. The ones that are supposed to come today, I got that email that told me that uh, they, they might not work. And I and it, it, on you said Amazon, that last night, on yeah. Amazon it says it works with the right. HP Plus. Yeah, I right. just okay. that's why I've never bought printers anymore or that off of Amazon because it's always been like scams or whatever. I don't know. There's just like so many people on there selling fraudulent stuff or something. So well, I've done nothing over the I years, but buy but that. buy the second party um, uh, ink. Because yeah. it's fine, you know, and it's cheaper. I mean, they, the prices they want to charge for ink. Pretty crazy. It, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I think somebody compared the amount of ink that's in those cartridges to the amount of blood <laughs> that you could buy for that price. <laughs> yeah. And blood was much cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all printers and, 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 and printers and ink, I mean, they're all scams. I mean, they're all pieces of shit. And, you know, I've bought three printers for down here now that were Wi-Fi printers that will not print off Wi-Fi. I've told you that before. They will not. Wow. I mean, they just, they just won't. What brand are they? You know, I've bought two or three different ones. And I oh. fucking bitched and bitched. And my wife was like, oh, it's, it's you. It's not the printer. The one I got works fine. Blah, blah, blah. So I hand it to the computer and I say, here, you buy the fucking printer then. When it shows up, we'll see if it works. Sure enough, doesn't fuck work. Blah, well, blah. the Epson is Wi-Fi and Ethernet, depending on what you want to use. I prefer to use Ethernet yeah, all right. the time. I, I leave it connected to Wi-Fi, and that way when the ink runs low, they send me new cartridges. I just... Well, you have an HP, and that's why they do that, right? But yes, you're paying yes. a lot of money for that. I would never do that again. I would never buy that plus thing again. Well, you 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 didn't I feel so you, screwed like you do. You got to remember, you didn't buy it. What you did was like me when you got the HP computer uh, printer. They said, "Hey, if you want an extra year yep, of a warranty, exactly. jo yep. join the HP Plus." So I figured, what the hell, you know? And then I find out once you join HP Plus, you can't use anything else but their their ink. Genuine ink cartridge. Now they're yep. being sued by the government over that now. Yeah. You know, and I hope they lose big time. You know? Yeah. Yep. Be because the FCC, it's terrible. Yep, I understand the FCC is going after them for uh, false advertising. And you know what Epson did? Epson's are more expensive than HP printers. And there's a reason why. Because you can use any ink with them. They're not selling you... Uh, the the razor and uh, charging you large prices for the uh, for the razor blade, you know. So so printers have gone the way of what in business is called the Kodak way, and I bet you've all heard that term mm -hmm. and know what it is. Kodak learned early on: you sell the camera cheap, and you sell expensive film and expensive developing. And that's where you make your money. And so in mm -hmm. business, it's called the Kodak way. Printer companies have done the same thing. They put out a cheap printer, and then they grab you by the cojones and say, now we got you, you're going to buy expensive ink, or you're going to join HP. There's only one company that does that now, though, and that's Ooh. HP. Oh, yeah. I, I, okay, I uh, Epson doesn't do that. C uh, Canon has one that you can pour the ink in. I mean, they, they decided, I think, let's just give them a printer and let them let them buy a printer, <clears throat> you know. Uh, we're not in the ink business. Uh, yes, Jeff. I think a lot of the cars that are manufactured now do the same strategy. <laughs> where, well, your car needs to be fixed once a year, tuned up, 
right? And it cost a thousand dollars. Yeah. But what are they really doing to change the oil? Right. And an air filter, if you're lucky. Yeah, we have the one, the magic filter. Yeah. You know? Sounds like you and I have the same car. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I go to to a private guy who does it. So do I. Yeah. And he, he does it like a third of the price. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If anything. And, and well, you know it's, the, it's also the early inspection thing, too, that goes on for cars. Oh, yeah, boy, that's important. You know, in California, that's a real racket. It sure is. Because you can't get your car registered unless you've had it, you know, checked. And, and there's always something wrong. You know. I go to Ford, and they, you know, I, when I first got my Ford van, they have a service called Quick Lane. It's 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 a lie. It takes them three hours to do an oil change, and every time they're under there, they find something new that, oh, your oil plug seal is bad. Oh, you need this. Oh, you need that. I'm like, I came in for an oil change. Don't look at the rest of the vehicle. Change the damn oil. What was it they always used to make a big deal out of were the seals? You need new seals. Yeah, three hours later into an oil change, there's nowhere in the dealership to sit and watch TV or anything. Three hours for an oil change, please. I, 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 remind me to never go back there. I got a well, good no, but mechanic. All, all of these are rackets, you know, yep. and and we need to be protected against them. Okay, yep, absolutely. Uh, and, and the reason we need to be protected against them because there's nothing we can do about it. But yet California makes it easy for them. Oh, they say, oh, if anybody's upping the price and everything because they have to do a yearly inspection or doing it fake, we'll, we'll go after them. Sure you will. Yep. You know, first you got to prove it. Then you, you know, I mean, come on. You know, uh, I, where, where are all the protections for the public? There are no protections for the public anymore. anymore. You know. Not anymore. But anyway. Gee, we only, we, nobody's calling tonight. Well, How weird. Friday night, too. I know. I know. Baseball, football, what? <clears throat> no, just me. Nobody loves me anymore. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, Kevin, was, <laughs> Kevin was out tonight. What? Kevin was out they got tonight. A better date to Kevin do. was out tonight. Yeah, he's, yeah, he had something he had to do tonight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Brian, I think, has his car show. It's a big oh. thing. Mm, I, I yeah. told Kevin, you know, I said, look, I don't give a shit what you got to do. Gabnet. Or else, you know. Yeah, right. Get out of the fucking club. Right. Tell the kids you can't you know, celebrate. You can't, you tell your kids you can't celebrate her birthday. You've got to do oh. Alex's show. That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely. Simple <laughs> enough. When I tell my mother, I say, I can't, I can't take her care of you on Friday you know? anymore. I got to do it on Saturday. So you're breaking rules for people. They're all going to want it. You know what I'm sick of? Hey, Alex, what are you sick of? You know, uh, should, I should just—I should, should never start out that way. I should just say, here's another thing I'm sick of. Uh, first of all, we all know that places like MSNBC, Fox, and CNN have an hour of news to fill, and so if let's say nothing's happening. Let's say <laughs> the waters are all calm all the way around. They will take the smallest story and blow it up into a big festering pustule, you know? It's not and, news yeah. anymore. Right. So here, I'm watching the news this week, and he, every hour, they're with this Hawaii thing. Now, look, I'm very sorry what happened in Hawaii. Yeah. I'm so, very sorry what happened to those people. Uh, I think it is a it is a horrible tragedy, and I think if you have any way that you can help, you should do something about it. But, ladies and gentlemen, do we have to hear about it every hour on those news stations? And here's hour. The, here's the worst every part. 10 here's the worst part about it. Okay, I was watching, for instance, the the national news with Lester Holt, mm. and they're there. Like and here's the report. It lasted fifty. What, 13 minutes? I counted it. 13 minutes the first night out. And what they do is, out of that 13 minutes, I would say the 10 minutes were people crying on screen. You know, they go to people, they start interviewing them, and then they say things they know will trigger cr- 
crying in them. And then when they get them crying, that's the clip they show. Yep. And so what they're doing is showing an endless procession of people crying. Number one, I'm tired of seeing that, and here's why I'm tired of seeing it. It's not that I'm a cruel person, and I don't like I, I don't like seeing people, I don't want to see people cry. You're compassionate. I'm compassionate, and I don't want the networks to take advantage of their grief, which is exactly what they're doing. That's mm -hmm. what I feel. Plaintiffs, anybody disagree with me? <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, that's uh -huh. typically how they cover disasters, you know, is... Yep. Over and over and over again. A lot of sensationalism, and, you know, I mean, I think we're all aware of what happened. Yeah, no reason to report on it like that. So, yeah. You know, I I know, you know, a lot of Republicans were giving Biden a hard time for not going out there. You know, he doesn't care and all that. I mean, it, he hasn't gone yet. I mean, it's... Well, I think they got the gun hasn't cleared yet. They, I mean, you it, know, well, they, it, well, they got on they got on you know? Obama for one of those things where he didn't go immediately, oh. and he finally said, "I didn't go immediately because yeah. it's it's a bad situation, and I didn't want to go there and muck it up with my presence." Yeah, but, I mean, Biden's going this week. Well, Tuesday. when Biden goes, all he, he here's all he's expected to do. Oh, isn't that terrible? Yeah, they'll take you a know, tour. They'll it doesn't over. solve anything. <clears throat> It'd be better right. if he stays back in Washington and gets those people money. Yeah, yep. I mean, the, the same tour that he'll get from the helicopter could be done uh, with the drone while he watched from the Situation Room at the Absolutely. White House, right? I mean, <laughs> and you know, it's a lot less money, you know. But, I mean, a, you know. It's a big deal to fly the president into something like that. It yeah. isn't like you just put him on Air Force One, he lands, and he walks out and talks. The Secret Service have to go there a couple of days in advance, have to get all the different routes, where the closest hospitals, his blood type, all the different things that, that are involved in protecting the president that people just don't see. They think the plane lands, he walks well, off, also, and he gives a speech. The question is, is what is him being there going to do? How, how is the situation going to be any better? Now, would it be better if he stood and sat in Washington and started passing some legislation to get money to those people, immediate relief? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know. I think the visit is good because I've, I've heard a lot of firsthand account and testimony from people I've seen interviewing stuff in the past that said those things, what they do is it allows him to bring people with him, like the FEMA director and the important deputies to that person, who will then interface with the local people and say what is it you need what are you not getting what can we do for you and they they can get quick action and results via the entourage you know that comes with him and things like that so the, i think you yeah, know, like what, the what, what, what's the difference between that though and just telling the fema director get your ass out to hawaii well i, I mean yeah. i agree i mean I, i'm not saying it's really changes anything mm -hmm. i'm just saying that i i think the visit is okay i just kind of rolled my eyes a little bit about some of the criticism that i heard you know like that he hadn't been yet you know so he must not care and i'm i'm like you know it yeah sort of hasn't even really cooled off from the flames yet i mean give it a just a minute here you know i mean he'll go in a few days after it's sort of it's under control. I mean, they're still looking for bodies, if you will. I mean, yes, they are. You know, I don't really think anything was wrong there. You know, it's just another one of those deals where we're just looking for criticism. Where why does why it why does he just go out to Hawaii and throw toilet paper at those people? Uh, what the paper towels? Paper towels in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, That's Jeff. Okay, I. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's, what's happening with my wife and her friend. Um, the, her, her friend invented this idea because uh, she, she lost a brother when he was like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and she was very upset about this and really never knew how to handle that. So she started writing her own books for kids 
and also give them toys and other things. For, and it was a nonprofit organization for people who were grieving, mm -hmm. for kids. And uh, it's kind of successful in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was, anyway, there was a place of, of group in uh, for the same place where all these people are dying. And they had sent them and bought some of their stuff maybe a year or two ago. But they knew about it. They called up uh, Pam's friend and they said, listen, we don't have any money now. But we got kids who are really sick. Their parents are dead. We don't know what to do. I know that your books work well with kids. So can you send us 500 of these? Mm -hmm. Oh, 50. I'm sorry, 50 of these things. They sent them 50 units like in two days. Mm -hmm. And and I know that for certain kids, something that you can do. And I'm very proud that they did that. And, you know, we had to throw some, it's a nonprofit, so everybody had to throw some money in to pay for the stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's it. It wasn't, it wasn't gazillions of money, but it was substantial money from anybody who invented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a pretty good thing. And I think there's a lot of things that people can do. And, Forget about the government and, and everybody else. Sometimes you, you just got to send them a free hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Say that. yeah. Uh, as a theoretical idea. Yeah. 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 So, I think it's a nice thing that she's doing, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, and they're working on it. They, they, this gal has a job. She, you know, Mm -hmm. She does this stuff at night or early in the morning or whatever and, and has a front of a couple of people who help yeah. her. But, you know, I, what, I, what bothers me is when they tell the president, here's what you got to do. You yep. know, you've got you've got to go out to Hawaii. You've got to see these people. Yep. You know, it doesn't... It, I want him to do something for those people, <laughs> not go out and plug up the works with you know flying a big huge airplane in there and his crew and then every every news person in the world following him around on this thing you know i i know what that's like i mean i was through it myself when we had the earthquake in in the marina and and really you just wanted the news people to go away you know mm -hmm. you had you had, you were grieving <coughs> over your neighborhood did you, hmm? did you see oprah was trying to get Oprah was there dropping off pillows and stuff like that. And then uh, they told the CBS crew that they couldn't go and follow her in. Yeah. Well, I mean, was she bothered by that? She sort of understood, but it's like, yeah, well, are you guys trying to get a publicity, you know, pictures or are you, you know, really donating money and trying to help them? Because she lit, I guess she has a huge, she's the biggest property, uh, single owner property, single property owner there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, at the beginning, they weren't letting people, even people that had like gone away because of the fire and they had all their belongings in their Airbnb or some house that they'd been renting out mm -hmm. in Lahaina area. They couldn't even go back through there. But, you know, then they're going to stick, you know, presidents and people through there just for, you know, for publicity pictures and all this other crap. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, um, if she does live out in that area. So it makes sense that she would want to help. Mm. Uh, but it was sort of weird. She was bringing some pillows, like new pillows, and like undoing them, giving them to people. You know, like lean forward, and she put them down, and they lean back, and you know they're filming all this stuff, and it's like. Well, that see that I don't like. Yeah. You know, I mean, I like people who do their charity and don't let most people know what's going on. I mean, I always point out David Letterman <clears throat> as being a guy who. For instance, after 9-11, there, um, there was a firehouse right near the station, right near the studio. And they lost quite a few people at that station in 9-11. And he sent stuff over by the ton to the families, to the, you know, whatever, uh, to take care of them. 
but nobody knew and nobody found out about it because he he felt that when you do charity you don't make a big deal out of it you just do it and don't yeah. expect anything else you're not doing it for the publicity he supposedly had one person who who he lent a lot, gave a lot of money to some comic i don't know who he was okay and said to him and this is i hear this the second hand however but said to the guy listen i don't mind giving you this money but if you tell anybody i gave it to you I mean, that's the last you're going to see mm -hmm. and, and he did not want publicity for his charity and then people would say well, why don't you do more for charity that guy put more money out of his pocket for good works than maybe any performer in the business and yet he didn't want anybody to know it he didn't need the he didn't want the publicity he would get from it because he said i'm not doing it for the publicity i'm doing it because there's some human misery out there and you want to take care of it so i'm very suspicious of people who then go in you know Oh, uh, we're going to do this charity for the people in Hawaii. Come on, everybody. You know, look at me, how good I am because I'm doing this. You know, just shut up and do it. Yep. You know? Oh, wow. And don't think that the publicity <clears throat> is going to make it uh, worthwhile doing. You know, so. Uh, that's charity. <laughs> that's charity. Uh, you know, so I mean, anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, what was I was going to say, what, what, there was one other thing I want to talk about. There was one other interesting thing out there. Huh? What? Uh, Tiffany opened the door. She saw I was on and she closed the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, th that's the news for the hour, folks. Uh, Tiffany <laughs> tried to come in. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I mean, we, we of course we've got our president. He has to show up by next when next Friday at noon in Georgia to be arraigned. Yeah. What happens if he doesn't show up? I guess they go out and arrest him, huh? Warrant, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I would assume that they issue a warrant for the arrest. I would. Yeah. Say. Yep. Yeah. That'd be my assumption. You know, in yeah. uh, most states, uh, I did read an article today that said. Uh, Georgia is one of the only states that does this, I think. Uh, so, which really I think is stupid that they do. When you are indicted in the state of Georgia, the names of the members of the grand jury that indicted you are published in the indictment, yeah. which is incredibly stupid. And yep. these people have now had their identities revealed, and our uh, the FBI is opening up or has opened up and is down there trying to protect these people from the massive amount of threats that they're all receiving. Yep. So. And there, there's also the threat that, yeah, there's also the threats of that, you know, that they say there's a Josh Wheeler on, on that and they've been going to Facebook and they jumped the gun as saying, oh, here's Josh Wheeler and they show a picture from Facebook and social media of you, Josh, and it's not you, it's somebody else. Yeah, I mean, they're right. They're definitely going to have some trouble with that. I mean, I don't really understand why that state would have ever instituted a policy of publishing uh, jury members' names. Um, I, I thought all that was supposed to be confidential. Not, it may, it may be, listen, well, I think for the most part it is, oddly enough. But until, the, until the indictment is, is revealed and then everything that was done in the grand jury is revealed, yeah, I believe in most states, the exception being who was on the jury, you know, is pretty much about the only thing they leave out. Well, in most situations, so, but, it wouldn't matter. But in this climate today, well, right. it threatens their lives, you know. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, it's, that's not that's not good. But uh, I mean, there was a time when, when you served on a grand jury and you did it and then you whatever you had to do with the grand jury and when it was over with, maybe your name was known or it wasn't known, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Nobody was going to come after you. Now it's like as soon as it's mentioned, oh, hey, you know, 10, thre 10 death threats. I mean, look at the attor district attorney. Yeah. Here in yeah, New York, that, the one here in New York has gotten all kinds of death threats. Well, you know, that's the kind of carnage that 
Trump brings with him, and you mm -hmm. know, people could say you can't blame it on him, or well, yeah, you can. It is his fault. Number one, he's the one who went and got himself indicted. You never hear him or getting two. on television saying, "Folks, cool it. This yeah. is a this is oh, a process, yeah, he's not, he's not and please don't anything. go after the people who are simply." Uh, no. uh, 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 adjudicating the process yeah yeah you know? he's not doing anything to stop him matter of fact he's you know encouraging it by talking about how it's a you know it's a scam and you know it's a it's a fixes in and all that you know so yeah you know i mean it's this is the kind of stuff that he brings i mean but january 6th remember after he started telling all the people please i love you you're doing good but don't do this remember the fabricated <laughs> speech oh, that, that was he right after that, january 6th yeah, yeah we, was, we love you we love you yeah. you're good <laughs> go home and this was two hours after they the riot had the riot had been put well, down that, you I know think, right yeah yeah. yeah 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 so i don't you know he's got to show up for for that deal you know i mean there's another thing that the news is you know i understand the coverage of it but i know what you were saying earlier they they gotta jazz it up too you know they basically like, oh, report that be, they basically be, uh, yeah, they're basically fingerprints they're basically over. reporting that nothing new has happened yeah well like i said other than they gotta keep dropping those lines in about oh being fingerprinted and uh, will the sheriff stick to the to the mugshot policy you know i mean i don't know i don't care it doesn't matter yeah they they brought up i was watching cnn and they actually yeah they brought up the whole if he does have to go to jail does his security go with him and they say oh that's you know it's like this is a question that's been asked how long ago this was just like the other night it's like again all these old questions he keep popping up indictment over indictment because there's no news i don't think he will ever see a prison and the reason i don't i think he will he could see you know being confined to his home uh house arrest house arrest with an yeah. ankle bracelet please yeah yeah really yeah. <laughs> um, but because i don't think there's any prison that wants to take the responsibility or the expense of having to house a former president of the United States, you know, was he really the president? Yeah, he was. Do you do you notice there's something very interesting? Uh, everybody is president after the president. The news people refer to him as President Obama, yeah, President okay. Bush, President Carter. They yeah. never referred him. They never referred to uh, 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 to Trump as President Trump. They refer to him as Mr. Trump. I still think there's like this blur in my in my my history of life of this whole COVID and Trump all like mushed into one and I don't remember or believe much of it. Well maybe, maybe if he gets convicted they'll take it away from him or whatever, like a like a sports team who has to take down their championship banners or whatever after they Well all I all I paid attention to during his time in office was how many days were left till he wasn't president anymore. Yeah. You know, especially after he lost the election. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I I thought I'm an idiot, I guess. But I thought there was a chance he might just not be a great president, but he would be decent and he would have respect for the job he was given. But there was none of that. And there the was none of that. Yeah. I didn't think there would be. I mean, I well, never, for once, thought he'd be a good president or any, even a, a, ba a, a passable president. But, you know, you keep saying, well, he'll do this and he'll be, be, turn it into a, a, a you know, a, a, what do you call it, a, a, a horrible country in a terrible situation and blah, 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 blah. And I kept saying, you know, this democracy, democracy can survive that, you know? And the fact was... The democracy didn't survive that that well, you know. It barely got got out with its skin. Uh, you know? I mean, it's still here, and and you know, people are being called to account for it. Um, you know, there are going to be four trials for, you know, the and and, and they say the Michigan point. Michigan is thinking of doing more, adding another one. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a lot of states pile yeah. on. <laughs> At this point, there's a rumor. Oh, what did I hear? Not Michigan, Arizona. Arizona. Oh, 
Break is, laws will travel, you know. Huh? <laughs> well, he breaker did. will travel or whatever, you know. He's a, he gets yeah. around, so he broke laws in lots of states. Well, yeah. I he's got so many days set for trial that who knows oh, yeah, when he's going to be able to show up for the election. Yeah, yeah. that's going to yeah. be a real problem for you know for that. But hey, look, they want to they want to push play victim, but that's the way. It's not that way. They so. want to push the Georgia. The, his lawyers have asked the Georgia be pushed to. Uh, some time in 2026. Yeah, right. I, I know. Well, like eight, as long eight, as he's incarcerated until trial. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, 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 why? You know, that doesn't seem to make sense. Right. That's what I mean. His his teams, they don't have much, right? I mean, they don't. So this is the stuff that they do. They just ask for these nonsensical things that they know are not going to work, but I'm sure he mm -hmm. told them they had to, and then, you know, they, okay, you know, I'm willing to look like an idiot for you to not pay me, apparently, so go ahead, you know, if that's what you want to do, but, I mean, they're not going to win any of these challenges. There's only I mean, one problem with all, with all of this. You know, we always talked about this, use this term, that mm -hmm. he, he keeps sucking out oxygen out of the room. And with all these cases against him, he's constantly going to be sucking yeah. oxygen mm -hmm. out of the room. He's good at that. You know? Now, what do you think about it? He's not showing up, you know, for the uh, for the Republican debate. That's what he says. He, he did it, but he doesn't even want to commit one way. He wants to wait everybody the last minute for that, you know? So. No, no. He said now he's not showing up. I, I don't know if he did today or whatever. No, he said today. He, they said he was not going to show up. That he's going to do an interview with Tucker Carlson. Oh, pretty <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't think he wants to show up there because you got a bunch of people like Chris Christie who'll just take him to the goddamn cleaners. No, but it doesn't matter. His if he take, if if Chris Christie takes him to the cleaners, the people who are diehard Trumpers are not going to. Yes, gonna... but I think he still knows that he would have a hard time against him. And he might lose some people as a result of that, you know? But he's so far ahead right now with those guys. Yeah. He's 35%. Right. So yeah. how, how you can let them, to lose 35% off one other candidate? Well, it was, it was 40%. So, you know, he's lost a little as a result. Well, there's a lot of holing out now that I don't know how much I want to believe in it but i mean there's a lot of pulling out in the last 24 hours that basically shows you know well over 50 percent of the country and in some pockets in the 60s percent that think that he has committed uh somewhat serious to serious crimes and that he should not run mm. or not be allowed to be president again i mean it looks very very bad on that level and among republicans that number is actually pretty high it's it's now around it's like in the high 40s or something that think he's committed crimes and shouldn't be but i don't know that i necessarily trust it because again i haven't seen witnessed talked to mm -hmm. A single person who's changed their mind well i, I think mean, i think he will person. get i think he will get nominated yeah. You know, but that's a party thing. That's not a right. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, he will get nominated, but uh, the election itself, I don't think he can win. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's what I mean. the The polling that was out this morning, last night and this morning, and it was discussed in depth on the news that I watched this morning. You know, especially among independents, uh, like I say, it was in the sixty percentile. You know, saying. Uh, that he committed crimes that were either, in their opinion, uh, somewhat serious or very serious, you know, to serious or whatever, you know, yeah. how he or yeah. those things. But, you know, um, and, you know, shouldn't be running for president. So, but, you know, the thing about these polls is, you know, they don't, they also don't ask, even though you think that, yeah. Does that 100% mean that you care or that you won't vote for him? It's like the old thing, you know, it's, uh, there was this episode of the West Wing that time that said, you know, pass a flag burning uh, amendment since you can't burn the flag because 85% of the American people are 
for it. And if you if you get that passed, you'll get reelected right away. And then some other pollster says, yeah, everyone said they were against it, but no one ever asked them how much they cared about it. And mm-hmm. if you asked them how much they cared about it, that number is about a 2%. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, so that's what I'm saying. I don't know if that polling is really as negative for him as it sounds or if I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. There the was a time. When, if somebody were running for president and he had just one of these charges against him, just one of them, he couldn't win. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You know? I mean, uh, and... Wasn't and, that long ago. And I mean, there, how many total charges? Something like 91 charges between I, well, all the cases? Yes. Come but on, I don't you, know, guess. you know. Why they don't incarcerate Well, you, you know he's not going to skate on every one of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're... Probably even just 10 years ago, 15 years ago for sure, there was not really a way that a person that who you could say on the day, on Super Tuesday, this person will not be at a hotel watching results. They will be in day nine of their criminal trial for uh-huh. X, Y, and Z. Uh-huh. People would say, uh, we're out. You know, that person would drop out the race or resign or refuse it's to stay and ev- no one would vote for the pro- I mean it would just be they would just be embarrassing themselves but obviously that's changed I mean because now people you know people don't care people are mad they won't let him out on to go campaign you know they should wait till after the election to well do I mean the whole idea of that they they put out there of uh, he's running for president and therefore blah 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 the fact is, if I were a judge in any of those cases, I would say, I don't care what you're doing with your spare time. And that's You know, there's a case yeah. here to proceed with, and yep. the fact that you're running for president doesn't give you any special uh, dispensation yeah. in being tried. That's pretty much the answer that he's been given. You know, so far, no one's really yeah. said we're going to accommodate Nobody's that. asking him to run for president. Right. You know, everyone has basically said this is the the dates, and these are the rulings, and you know you're just that's that that's that. I mean, he's not he's crying about that, but he's not getting any of that, you know, or he's not winning that argument or anything. No, you yeah. know, at least not yet. No one has said, "Oh, you're right." You know, we'll schedule this for right December of 2024 after the election is settled. You know, I mean, it it you know it. It shouldn't matter, and so far it hasn't. So that's what I'm saying. I, I think, you know... But he, 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 he he's... Wrong. What do you say? You know, they're, they're not treating me like they treat anybody else. Yeah, well, right. no, they're not treating you like anybody else. They're treating you more special than they would yeah. anyone mm-hmm. else. If yeah. it was me, yeah. I'd be in jail right now trying to figure out how I'm going to pay the bail. Right. right. You know, I don't... Lost to your passport. I don't get the uh, streets blocked off for me and get to sneak in and out of the back door and, you know, right. all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. it's I wonder if they're going to take his passport away in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope so. They do it gonna, just about every major criminal case <clears throat> in the country. How's he going to find a new wife if he gets his passport taken away? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where is his wife? Yeah, yeah not by his side. He's with some young guy now. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, has he lost weight a little bit, do you think? He looks no, like he he's looks lo- I, I lost never. any hair. I think he gained weight. Yeah, really? I think he's gained weight. Oh, well. I guess I just have a On the seafood on. diet like me, you seafood, you eat it. Right. da da boom <laughs> Okay. Hey, listen, uh, that's uh, that's about it. We're playing our theme. Mm-hmm. You can't hear it. I'm still trying to figure out why, but, you know. Anyway, uh, I want to thank uh, 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 Josh for being here. Thank you so much, Josh. Good seeing you this evening. Jeff, thank you. As always, always a pleasure. You're always there for us. Uh, so, mm-hmm. is, uh, so is our uh, good friend uh, Alan. And Charlie is there when there isn't softball you know how's the weather out there still hot yep okay <laughs> just cool. check his facebook he's doing instead of covid deaths he's doing how many days of over 100 now 42 <laughs> consecutive days of over 100 it, it's, it's cool it's cooling down here unbelievable yeah it's finally cooling down here but who knows it may go back up 
And oh, I, we're, we're going to get a huge storm, huge hurricane or something. Oh, yeah. 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 Good luck with the hurricane. Wow. <laughs> That's the, it's going to hit L.A. first, though. It's okay. not supposed to Bri hit the Bay Brian, area. thank you so much. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And then I will fade to my camera. All right. There we go. There they go. That's our that's our citizen panel for tonight. There's another one that's going to be forming, like uh, oh I don't know, like a scum on a pudding. Next, uh, right here, uh, with uh, Jack Bishop and the intersection at Skype with Gabnet Live being the place to call. I'll see you again. Let's see here Monday. We do the uh, pop up show at four o'clock on Facebook, and then we'll see you again right back here, uh, ten thirty on Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.